we were born. We used to yep. Good morning! Why? Welcome back to a special edition <laughs> Grounds with the Goats. Yeah, we were going to go live yesterday. That was kind of what I was talking about doing all week. And then my mom messaged me yesterday. She said, are you going to go live today? I said, ah, I might. No. Later this evening. And then I have still not spoken to her since I told her that. <laughs> Sorry, Ma! So, and Sam yesterday was sitting there and she's like, we should just do an extra ground with goats tomorrow morning before we go to church. Make up for it. Oh. I thought, good idea. Everything I suggest is a great idea. Sounds like a grand plan and a grand though. scheme of things. Um, what? I said, oh my gosh, you sound like Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop? So, yep. Oh, and then my church clothes. Chiefs don't play till 12 p.m. tonight. So, not really, 7.30, but it feels like 12 p.m. Or, wait, no, 12 a.m. <laughs> 12 p.m. would be normal. Lord help me. <laughs> that would be the normal time. I wish they played at 12 p.m. <sighs> Squeeze. But. I married it, y'all. I married it. It's because we've won the Super Bowl so many times, so now, uh -oh. like, almost every single Chiefs game <coughs> is a primetime game. And the only, I like, I, like, I don't mind primetime games, but at the same time, I like to go to bed at a decent hour. Yeah. But that's the only thing that sucks is primetime games are 7.30, not over till 11. So we're talking Sunday night football, Monday night football, and Thursday night football. And I was looking at the schedule, and it's literally like almost it's every game this season is primetime game. Primetime. So, but, but we do have one game that we play, we play Miami Dolphins, but we play them in Germany. We're going to Germany to play the game, and that game is at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday. It hurt in the morning. Bro, you see this? You see this piece right here? You see oh this right gosh. Here? So, uh, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do for it. We didn't do nothing yesterday. I played lazy butt yesterday. Did not do nothing. And when I, he says nothing, he means literal nothing. Yeah, I never even went outside. Meanwhile, I had to, I didn't have to, I wanted to. I took Ashlyn stayed the night with us last night, or the night before, sorry. She stayed with us Friday, Friday night. night. I picked her up from work, brought her here, got up early yesterday morning, took her to work, and then I picked her up at 1.30. Then we went to go pick out a dress for, for her um, oldest brother's wedding, it was yesterday. She looks so pretty. I used to have a party. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. She looked way too grown when she left here. Let me knock her down a few notches. Yeah. That child, she's coming out of her shell, dude. Yes. She I is didn't a... think it was ever going to happen. <laughs> she likes to talk now. Dang! Yeah, girl. I love you, girl, but I'm trying to watch the show. Not me. I'll listen to you. <laughs> he didn't even want to hear anybody. Oh, you get off my knee? Gosh. <laughs> so, I kind of had some ideas of, uh, like, maybe doing a video telling the story of two of my best friends that died of drug overdose before they was 21, yeah. and my daughter. And actually going up, because I need to go up to the cemetery and kind of clean, it up, clean up, up Tara's grave and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just make a little video just letting y'all 
And the reason they're so, or well, at least my act. Okay, so they were both my best friends. So you know, in high school, you have your own little groups of people that you hang out with. Okay, so my group was three of us, and we were like best friends. That's who we ran. That was our group: me, Brian, and Travis, which was Goat, Dirt, and Squirrel. That was our group, and. They both passed away due to addiction before it's very they impactful 21, for David. Before he was 21. And now, now Squirrel, he was like my really best friend. Like he was like my brother. Like his family didn't have a whole lot. Uh, so my family, for the most part, took him in. Uh, he used our address for school. He basically he basically just lived with us like he was the one friend that would just pop in at my house even if no one had seen me for two or three weeks brian would just pop in at my mom and dad's and just you know get something to eat get something to eat and take a nap or whatever you know and that was normal because he, he was my brother yeah. but he passed away in march of 2004 and then Tara died in June of 2004 and Brian's death was really my first experience of uh, actually losing someone that you know what I mean like that I had that close that bond with, with yeah. yeah so that was really tough and then my daughter dying two months, three months after that. That was a really rough year, 2004. But yeah, thought about doing a video, just kind of going over their stories. And you know, I just think it's probably it's a good idea to uh, keep their name keep alive. their name alive. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's been Next Jesus year will man, be it's 20 been years. 20 years almost. Yeah. I think it was. I think Dart died in 2007. I think. Thing. But Dirt was a lot younger than us, so Squirrel and I had been held back in early years of school. So me and Brian were almost exact same age. Like I was born in November of 1983, he was born at the end of December 1983. So I was literally just like three weeks older than Brian. Mm -hmm. But Dirt was, I, he was a couple years younger than us. But we were all in the same grade. It will be 40 this year, by the way, just so everybody knows. <laughs> 40 is the new over the hill. 4-0. I'm, I'm just glad I made it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Because the uh, craziest thing. Well, uh, every single one of my good friends are dead or in prison. I had one other really, really close friend outside of those two guys, because we went to school together, me, Dirk, Squirrel. And then I had another good friend that I've been friends with since I was young, but he was from Sepulveda. And uh, yeah, he got in trouble in about his early, mid-20s and got 38 years in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. But he should be getting out. He's supposed to get out so. 24 next year, mm -hmm. sometime at some point. Now that's whenever he's scheduled for per, uh, uh, parole, parole hearing. Parole hearing. So it's not an official like getting out in 24. But he's from my understanding, he's done pretty yeah, well. Yeah, he's done really he's good. Done. He's he, he started off in like a medium security prison, and he done like 10 years there. And this last few years, he's actually been transferred to a very low, low security prison where they he work. He's got a full time job. He works on a ranch, forty hours a week. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he has a lot more freedom. And I haven't been to see him yet, and I feel really bad about it. I really do need to go up there and see him. I've been on his visitation with me and Sam for four years now, and we've just never had the opportunity to go up there and see him. And He's like I'm sure he's three hours away from where we are. That would end up having to be a full weekend kind of 
but he also true, gets it. You know, we talk every once in a blue moon, and uh, you know, life is fast really out fast. here. You know, and it gets really busy, and like I'll talk to him and stay in contact with him for a good stretch, and then all of a sudden, like we just kind of it just kind of cuts off. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's been six freaking months down the road. It's insane. And then I, I start feeling really horrible. I don't, well, I don't, I don't know what he can say. He actually went anything. through a very traumatic loss here this year. His brother mm -hmm. passed away. Got his picture on our fridge. And yeah, his brother is only like a Was year he? older than me. Oh, he's old? Oh. He's older. Yeah, a year or two older than me. That's Cody. That is Kevin's older brother. He passed away, but at first we were thinking, you know, because he didn't have no health issues or nothing like that. No. And uh, we thought it was awful strained. And of course, like not being negative or nothing about it, but my first thought was but everybody's more than likely fentanyl. And uh, and that's what Kevin was really, really worried about too. And we, we talked quite a bit throughout that stretch, but Come to find out, they did all the medical stuff and all of that, and he had no fentanyl in his system at all. Yeah. Uh, so it was literally a natural, some type of natural occurrence. It was an aneurysm. An, and yeah, that happened while he was asleep, which is really sad. He was only 42. But didn't he and just talk about Jesus and give him yeah, his life? Yeah, see, thoughts. and that's the thing. You see, Cody and Kevin, they grew up in a family... Which I'm not saying nothing wrong they with They just it. don't know they Jesus. Just, yeah, they didn't grow up knowing God. And uh, I can't say for 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure like his parents are more on the uh, atheistic side. Um, now, I know her, his mom is definitely changing she started her, to mind change her mind slowly. Uh, so after Cody passed away, we went over there and uh, visited Colleen. David their, took her a book. Their mom, yeah, I brought her a Good scripture book. book. Yeah. So that she could just, you know, you know, it's kind of coded in different, like anxiety or loss or depression or blah, 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 whatever. You can just look it up that way. And then it has all the different scriptures for that specific thing. But we talked about God, and things, which is really cool. Yeah. It is good to kind of hear how she was talking about how she's starting to change. Yeah. Yeah, I need to go see Kev. We really do need to go see Kev. So we need to plan that. Like, we can make an awesome video of that. I don't know that you're able to take in anything like that, sweetheart. I don't know. We'll have to get a hold of Kev. Like I said, it's one of those low security prisons. And what's cool know, but... is the visitation type things in the prison that he's at is uh, yep. like you actually go up there and hang out with him for like eight hours. Like the visitation. You Like he said that there's like this huge room that has like game board or board games and all kinds of different stuff that you can just hang out and you can literally stay there for him a full day so we can kick up there and just kick it with him all day long we need to do that man but i know i don't think a whole lot of people ever, he probably got a lot of people reaching out to him after cody passed away it's just so far away it's something that really has to be planned ahead I'd he's like in Oklahoma, to, but... I, he is, but he's almost to the Texas border. Not too far outside of the Texas border. Yeah. It'd be cool to go see him, though. Well, we gotta go in two minutes to make it to church on time. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, and so today, after church, that's probably what we're gonna do, and I am gonna make Sam go with me so that she is part of the video. You're not making me do nothing. It's not just my fat head. I say it just like at. David does. What? What? I'm so, not going arrowhead, bro. Oh, that's another thing. I want to go arrowhead. I'm not. So bad. Yes. When it cools uh, down, yeah, I'm down. It's, it's still not that bad outside. All right, guys. Hey, we love you. <laughs> we thank you. Y'all are amazing. So awesome. Thank you so much for all your support and everything you do. Right. And if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Y'all know what to do. We'll catch you on the next one. Yesterday. There was sun and there was rain